Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, CNW1015, and I am back after my brief hiatus. Um, so today, I'm going to be doing a overview of my custom Lego locomotives I have built over the past couple years. Um, yeah, just as a note, these are custom builds. These are not commercially. These are not commercially available at all. I basically just took some sets and utterly destroyed them and then made them into these. So, without further ado, let's let's start going. Well, one one last thing before I do start. Um, I want to thank all of you for 50, 54? Yeah, 54 subscribers. Um, this is... See, I didn't think it would... I didn't think I would have that many subscribers that fast. So, like, once again, thank you very... Thank, thank you all very much. So, I guess I'll go over them in the order in which they were built. So, let's take a look at this one first. So, this is a... Um, it's a... Let me get a better just there there we go so this is a just a kind of like a general 440 it's got a um it's got a box headlight and a diamond stack i'm saying when i was building this locomotive i was say when i say i first built the locomotive back in like 2018 it looked absolutely nothing like this here i'll probably show some photos so sh ah, excuse me show some photos of it right now on the screen um, yeah, it looked very different to how it looks today. It was actually driven by, by a bunch of gears. Don't exactly know why I didn't just go, just drive it straight from the wheels, but I guess we'll never know. Um, so the engine is, has a, um, just a kind of like standard Lego Power Functions motor. It's like right down in there. A standard train motor, motor. Um, so I have the, um, battery box and um, infrared receiver for the um, remote control right there in the tender. And um, so when I was building this locomotive, I was taking inspiration from, from actually locomotives that are operating in amusement parks, like more specifically um, Silver Dollar City and Six Flags St. Louis. I looked at a lot, I looked at their locomotives and just kind of took some inspiration from them. So yeah, this is the, um, it is one of my it is one of my favorites and considering it was my kind of like I would say my first my first kind of like um, realistic mock because I've been doing stuff like this for years now but this is the first time I really aim to do something somewhat realistic so see, I guess people we'll get that out of the way right now and so excuse me right, so you're let me just get this engine over here it's the um, Number seven. So this is my sec. This is the second locomotive I built. I built it about a year after I built the number two over there. Um, so this one actually started out as a four four as a four four zero as well. So right now it's an Atlantic. This this engine has been through various changes and such. It was at one point. Of, uh, an American, then an Atlantic, then back to an American. Now it's an Atlantic today. Um, it is based off of various classes, various locomotive classes that were built by um, Alco in the early 20th century. Um, take I took inspiration from locomotives off like the Detroit, and the DTI, and the CNW, and the New York Central, and stuff like that. See so the also also the. Also the um, the locomotive has. I was. I'm very proud of myself. I was able to get the um, kind of like diagonal, the frick. What what is it? Um, the um, kind of tilted um, cylinders here. So I've tried. I been work. I tried to work on that for. I tried work to work on that many times, and I inevitably failed each each time I tried to do it. But this time it looks somewhat good, and the front bogey still is able to traverse Legos unrealistically tight radiuses. See, also this engine is the um, this engine is tender driven. It has from the tender back here again another standard Lego Power Functions motor. See, unlike the number two, which actually has the motor on the locomotive. See, back here is you can see the infrared receiver right there, and the battery box is hidden inside the tender. Actually, right here, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a water hat. There's a little hatch right here, which I guess would realistically be for water if you lift that up. The um, 
that's the power button right there turn the engine on so I also added some of these little marker lights on the locomotive on the tender right there I think that I like I think they look nice also the um, number seven actually has a a de and detailed cab interior let me see if I can just kind of open it up here it's, it's not I didn't make this the easiest thing to get into so let me see if I can just kind of like um you know, just get rid of the tender for now so let me say that is the so we'll remove our little engineer so that is the um focus focus there we go so I got the inside of the cab right there Got a bunch of little levers and knobs and gauges and such. So yeah, this engine is realistically supposed to be a an oil burner, I guess, because cause like there's no coal load on the tender. So like I guess this would be your lever, your air brakes, your I don't know what you call that the the thing where where you put fuel into the fire. So this so that is my um shoot. It's my Lego Atlantic. See, it's my probably one of my definitely probably my favorite. Dang it, probably my favorite Lego engine I have built so far. Also, one last little thing on the Atlantic: the headlight is. I made a. I did a thing where I can move the headlight and the little like. I guess what's supposed to represent like a number board or something. And I had and you can put a uh, a different headlamp on there. Eh? Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna move this one out of the way. Get on to the um, last engine over there. This is the this is my newest engine. It is a. It is a it is a 262 prairie type locomotive and it is this probably the locomotive I have that has seen the least amount of change throughout the years it is for the most part remained the same since I first built it with only a few changes only a few cosmetic changes with the front of the locomotive um, like the like the number seven it too is also tender driven say so this time I did a probably a it's a very it's not I didn't do the best job of hiding the battery box I wasn't really trying and I still haven't really tried to hide it so I'll probably try to make that look better someday let's see so yeah, this is one of my favorite this engine is based off of prairie types that I saw off of the Santa Fe say so primarily um, I kind of looked at Santa Fe number I think it was 1880 yeah, that, one, that one's still around, I think. It's um, on display somewhere in Kansas. So yeah, this one also has a um, finished cab. Don't know how... This one also has a finished cab. Okay, I was able to get into it without breaking it. Yeah, that's the um, that's the finished cab right there. So you know, if some of you are, I guess, more keen to Lego trains and such, you will notice that that is actually the... Um, the firebox from the Hogwarts Express, which is, say, you see some of you, some of you might be horrified to find out that I, uh, I actually completely just completely tore up that set to build this locomotive. See, these are the main drivers, and those are the driver wheels from Hogwarts Express set. But so yeah, that is my that is the my prairie type number five. So I have a few more. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna move on to some of my rolling stock. So this is all of my freight rolling stock that I have built. Yes, I know it's somewhat abysmal, but again, I haven't really put much effort into it, so I probably should. I probably should build some more stuff. This so starting off with this gondola right here. Um, I actually I built this with the intention of it being like one of those open air excursion cars. That's why it has the um, ladder here and the little opening here, so you can set people inside it. I never got around to putting like any benches or anything inside of it. But so right now, I guess I've kind of used it for hauling freight, hauling you know just putting freight little crates and stuff inside it. It looks fairly nice going around a layout. 
Um, this is probably one of my favorite pieces right here. This is a, um, I guess you would say it's a, the most realistic counterpart is probably a bobber caboose from like the Denver Real Grands, very dusty. Um, yeah, it's nothing special. It does have a, a little ladder on the back and a, uh, you know how well you can see that there's a little bed inside there. But yeah, I'm I'm fairly happy with it, and I think it were it, it looks good going around a just a small layout. So with all of my so that's so that's my freight rolling stock. Let's move on to my passenger rolling stock. So here I have my two passenger coaches. So the first one, this first one here, um, this is a combine. I don't exactly know. Okay, there's nothing in there. But yeah, this is a little combine coach. There is. This is getting very spar a very sparsely deck has a very sparsely decorated interior. But it has the um you know, little um baggage baggage area with the doors. So I'm fairly happy with that. Saying over here, this is my um my dining car, dining car observation car parlor car thing. We're gonna go with that. Um, so this did at one point in time have um, seats inside it. It no longer does have seats inside it. They actually have these um, got a little um, deck on the back of it with what I guess would be somewhat of a I guess a drum head perhaps with the um, little gold um. So I think there's a telescope pieces. See so yeah, again another very another very sparsely decorated interior. So once again these do look nice going around a layout. So one thing that is different with them is the um, roofs. This one has a bit more kind of like smoother look appearance of like maybe a heavyweight car, and this is looks like it maybe came out like the 1870s or something. So I was originally going to make this roof look just like that one, but that was before I ran out of these little sloped pieces. So it has remained like that for several years now. But I do intend on changing it at some point in time. Don't know when that's going to happen, but it will happen soon. So all that out of the way, I guess I shall move on to the outro. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this video on my LEGO train collection. See, this is a video I have been wanting to make for a while. I just never really got around to making it till just now. Um, once again, thanks for 54 subscribers. If you, if you aren't subscribed, however, I mean, you, you should definitely subscribe for more railroad related content and otherwise. Um, say, so yeah, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment or future suggestions, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. So, this has been, this is CNW1015 signing off. Have a wonderful rest of your day.